I am inside a nuclear bunker, which is in the city of Tirana, which is the capital city of Albania, a former communist country in Eastern Europe. And in this video, I'm gonna cover my experience of coming into Albania and my first day in the city of Tirana. Skanderve Square. Right, so right now, I am in Ulsinj which is a border town on Montenegro and Albania. I'm heading to the bus hello. station to go to, hello, <laughs> to go to Albania. So, can I get the bus ticket to Skoda? Seven euros. It's at 12.30. Okay. So I made it into Albania even though I wasn't sure if I had the right visa. Now we're in the city called Skoder, which is usually very beautiful. So it's raining super hard. So I'm just gonna change into this bus right behind me and go to Tirana. It's 6 p.m. right now. And the bus just dropped us off in Tirana, four kilometers away from my hostel. And I guess I'm just gonna walk that way because I'm not sure how else to get there. The traffic on this street, this one behind me, is pretty bad. The last one hour, I think we moved like three kilometers. This is actually not my first time to Albania. I was here four years ago, but only for like three days. This time I'm hoping it's gonna be a lot different. Okay, so it was basically kind of dark by the time I got to the hostel yesterday, so I didn't get to really go out and see anything or film anything. But today I'm gonna go out and go to the center of Tirana, which is this place called uh, Skanderve <laughs> Square. <laughs> Right now, I am in Skanderbe Square, and behind me you see a huge statue of uh, Skanderbe, who was like a feudal leader back in what is Albania today. He fought a successful revolution against the Ottomans, conquering the area back in the days, so he's still a very famous and still considered a national hero to this day. So this square is arguably the very, very center of the city. On one side you have the statue of Skandar Bey, and on the other side, behind me that way, is the Opera Hall. Built during the communist times when uh, communist Albania was a ally of the USSR. And the first brick in this building was uh, laid symbolically by the USSR premier back then, Nikita Khrushchev. And on the other side, there's this hotel that's like only 15 stories, but that used to be the highest building in Albania for a long time. So people who are from here have told me that their parents used to come in front of this 15-story hotel and take pictures because it was their version of the Burj Khalifa. Also more interesting about the square is that because it's made from marble or some other kind of stone, it gets like really, really hot in the summer days. They have this system of like water coming out from the middle of the square and just flowing all over the place with little passages where people can walk without it getting slippery. You know, like it's like, <laughs> people are so friendly here. Everyone's talking to me. This guy with the camera was looking at my camera and was like telling me, oh no, Lumix is better than Canon. On another corner of the main square is this mosque called the Etembe Mosque, which was built during the Ottoman time. But then, when uh, it was under a communist regime, Albania officially became an atheist country in 1967. And 80% of the mosques in the country were destroyed and no one was allowed to practice religion. This one was somehow preserved because uh, it served not as a place of worship, but as like a cultural monument. But in 1991, when communism fell, this place was reopened again and 10,000 people showed up to worship. Now you can still come see this mosque and unlike a lot of other mosques in a lot of other places, you can actually go in and uh, explore the place. So I'm going to do that right now. I need to take off my shoes for this. So 
So as you might have noticed inside, this place is a bit different from mosques and other places you can visit. Women don't have to wear headscarves and uh, men don't even have to wear like long pants like in most places you usually do when you're going to a mosque. And that's because Albania is more of a culturally Muslim place. Like 60% of the population is Muslim, but they're not really religious. So more than 90% of the people have never even been inside a mosque, even though it is a majority Muslim country. That's because of a lot of things, but it was to a large extent because of the communism and the atheism policy. But to talk more about the communism, I feel like this is not the best location. I'm gonna talk more about it in a place that we're gonna go later. And next to the square, of course, there's a clock tower like basically every other town or city in Europe. Right now I'm going to an exchange office to exchange some money so I can get some food. But one thing you'll notice instantly when you come to Albania or Tirana especially is that true to the stereotypes, people love the car, Mercedes. I think I'm seeing like one every five seconds driving past me over here. I even saw like two taxis that are Mercedes Benz. You don't see that anywhere and to explain that you also kind of have to understand the communist past. Until 1991, no one in this whole country was allowed to have private vehicles. So in 1991, communism fell and everyone brought in like thousands of cars into the country and no one had a driving license. So it was chaos and uh, might explain some of the chaotic driving that you still see to this day. So right now I'm walking through one of the nicest pedestrian streets in Tirana and you'll notice that there's like a lot of Chinese flags up on top of me everywhere. Albania does this really cool thing where for the last couple of years every week they pick a certain country and for the whole week they honor that country's culture and try to uh, introduce the local people to the cultures of different countries which is a really cool move I think. More countries should do that. So I'm not sure what exactly that uh, instrument was, but it looked interesting, so I just uh, tipped him some money. By the way, right now I am sitting in front of the biggest mosque in the city, which is still under construction. If I remember right, it was also under construction when I was here four years ago, so I don't know if this is ever going to finish. I just went to an exchange office, which is inside a shopping mall. They didn't really let me film there, so I just filmed with my uh, phone. I got some uh, Lex, which is the official Albanian currency. Looks pretty interesting. By the way, if you're a Bangladeshi living abroad and you're having trouble sending money to Bangladesh from abroad, you should check out this app called TapTapSend. TapTapSend is a very simple app that allows you to send money easily from the US, UK, Canada or Europe to Bangladesh. There's a lot of really good reasons for using TapTapSend. Number one, there is no commission and there is no fee on sending any amount of money. The exchange rates are pretty damn good. Number three, the transaction times are also really good compared to competitors. Number four, this is a unique one, you can send your money to a bank account in Bangladesh or directly to a Bcash account. And number five, I've been talking to the guys at TapTapSend and they've given me a special promo code for my viewers, OTG, for on the go. So if you use that promo code OTG on your first transaction, you get a 10 credit bonus. That's 10 US dollars if you're sending money from the US, 10 Canadian dollars if you're sending money from Canada, 10 euros if you're sending money from Europe, and 10 pounds if you're sending money from the UK. So make sure you check out TapTapSend if you need to send money to Bangladesh from abroad. By the way, you'll notice on every bill, there's like the word uh, Shkiperis or something like Shkip. So Albanian, the word is only used by foreigners to describe Albanians. And uh, the country and the language is called something else over here. I think Shkipe is the language or Shkip. And the country's name is uh, Shkiperia, if I remember right. On the 5,000 Lek note, there's a picture of uh, Skanderbe, the statue we saw earlier. People here are so beautiful. Anyways, got myself a burger from Mr. Potato with patatas on the side, the french fries. Spicy sauce, like urnabas. This is amazing. So what you see next to me is a nuclear bunker that was meant to protect the citizens in case of a nuclear attack from foreign powers. 
быстро увеличился в объеме. There's also like windows on the side from which people could fire machine guns. There's like a few of these around here in the city and there's 170,000 or more than 170,000 of these bunkers spread across the country. And to help you understand the story of why these are here, now I have to talk a bit more about communism in Albania and this crazy guy named Enver Hoxha. What's your cut? Uh, 650,000. 600? Whoa. Yeah. Where are you from? Bangladesh. Bangladesh? Yeah. Do you guys want to be in the video? No, no, no. You don't? Okay. <laughs> I'm afraid because, you know, Binya, you do, when you, saw, you do a video with somebody in YouTube, they, they're going to name you. They're going to name you? No, they may, man. They Meme you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's possible. I don't want that. That's fine. That's okay. All right. Bye-bye. Just ran into some kids and uh, now, the, now do, you, do you want me to write it down? Thank you. You want to be in the video? Okay. Yes, hi, Scott. Say hi. 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 <laughs> so you're not afraid of being memes? No. Yes. Right. <laughs> so what? So what? All right. Excuse me. What's your names? My name is Noel. My Noel. name is Arya. Arya and Noel. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you too. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. That was such a cute moment. Let's go back to talking about communism and the history of this country. So basically for uh, 45, 46 years, starting from the end of World War II until like 1991, 1992, the whole country was under a communist regime, which was led for the most part by this guy named Enver Hoxha, who was a crazy dictator who blocked off the country from the rest of the world completely, made the people go through immense amounts of suffering. People were not allowed to leave the country. If they did manage to escape, three generations of their families were sent into jail. So someone would escape the country to Italy, and their third cousin, who's never even heard of them, would go to jail. The country was very poor. It had uh, no access to information about the outside world. They were struggling to get even like basic necessities. The secret police was everywhere. It was just a very tragic and a very crazy situation. And I will make a whole dedicated video explaining what exactly happened in that period, talking more about the lives of the people at that time and the aftermath of the whole thing. And that's gonna be the next video, but I just wanted to give a brief introduction to what really happened in Albania in those communist times. Because you can't really understand this country or the people without talking about the communist era, which was so recent. Another interesting thing is when communism fell in Albania, it also fell all across Eastern Europe. And Berlin, the capital of Germany today, was at that point split in half by the Berlin Wall. And the people of Germany donated a piece of the original Berlin Wall here to commemorate and to remember the sufferings of the people who suffered throughout communism in Albania. Something very interesting, which is a very recent development, is that uh, I'm on the street right now, which has the Russian embassy. And ever since the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the government of Albania has changed the name of the street to Free Ukraine Street. So that every time someone has to write a letter to the Russian embassy, they have to write the words Free Ukraine in the address. So right now I'm in front of one of the biggest Catholic churches in the city of Tirana. Right in front of this is a statue which is a memorial to Mother Teresa. I feel like a lot of you already know her. She's a very, very famous Catholic nun and a humanitarian who was recognized with the Nobel Peace Prize for her work in helping the poorest of the poor, which is her life's mission. I am very familiar with her because she spent a big chunk of her life living in West Bengal, a part of India where they speak the same language that I do in Bangladesh. She was actually uh, born in Skopje, which is today in Northern Macedonia, but she was born to an Albanian family. During communism, people were not even allowed to talk about religion for a long time and the amount of information that they got from the outside world was very limited. Most people over here didn't even know who she was. Ever since communism fell and the freedom of information has gotten a lot better, 
people really celebrate her and her Albanian heritage. The inside of this church is really cool and there's like a really cool mural dedicated to her inside there as well. On top of this church, there is a statue of a saint from the pose that he's doing. I'm not sure exactly what he's doing, but it looks a lot like he's taking a selfie. So I'm gonna finish today's video from here in front of the church. If you like this video, don't forget to like it. If you wanna see more videos like this, feel free to follow my page or subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want real-time travel updates, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Nadir on the go. I'll catch you guys in the next video from Tirana. We're at the very peak and I think we see Volbona Valley on that side. And that's where we're going, down to the dry bed. Clara, you wanna be the <laughs> Clara's sitting down because she doesn't like heights. I am in the Albanian Alps right now. In this video, we're gonna explore the mountains of northern Albania. You don't like that? So right now I'm in the Albanian Alps and in this video we're going to explore the mountains of northern Albania.